These are the people who stand on the grave of Martin Luther King Jr. once a year, every year, and try to use his words uh, for political expediency, and it's just not accurate. I think that if he had been anywhere close to what we have today, his speech might have been a little different. And any man, woman, thee, or your guess is as good as mine will be seen only as the sum parts of the sexual organs skin color and or results of their current hormone replacement therapy, I have a dream. Question of the day, what do you think, given the information, uh, Martin Luther King uh, would have thought of the modern social justice movement? That includes everything, intergenderism, LGBTQAIP, Black Lives Matter, just, I don't even know if Black Lives Matter is still a thing. Yeah, Are they I called something I else? I don't think so. Anyway. I have no idea. Mm. But let's imagine Martin Luther King Jr. today. I'd like to contrast uh, his words, his ideas, with the ideas of the left, who of course love to deify Martin Luther King Jr. Um, today. And by the way, before I go on, I, I get, before you get into the comment section, I understand it's important to separate the ideology, the ideas, the isms from the man. Okay, I get it. He was flawed, serial philandering yep. plagiarist, might have done crack, but that's not what we're talking about. Everybody you was can doing crack. still, who among us? <laughs> Throw the first crack stone. <laughs> I think it's just a rock. Yeah, yeah it's a rock. Um, but I want to focus on the ideas that he espoused, and not only espoused, but actively encouraged. I mean, this was his raison d'etre. This is what he lived for. So yeah. let's contrast it. First, uh, Martin Luther King Jr., where would you think that he lines up on Western civilization, particularly the United States of America? Well, he was... Um, very much passionately pro-Constitution, pro-Western Judeo-Christian morality. And a lot of people forget this. He was a pastor. Right. Mm, yeah. Often refer some reverend, pastor. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not entirely sure the difference. I think it's a collar. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. a pointy hat, but he supported these <laughs> ideas, uh, particularly of the founders uh, and the Declaration of Independence and our Constitution. It was a common theme in his speeches. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Isn't it funny, though, too, when you go back and look yeah. at that, you know, the audience was mixed, but the black people, if they were to dress that way today, would be accused of not oh. being black enough. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. oh, yeah. What are you wearing? What are you wearing? Your fedora and plaid shirt. You a f***ing brawny man. Get the f*** out this motherfucker. Oreo. <laughs> <yo. laughs> And by the way, he expanded on that even further. Uh, there was, a, I want to bring this up, uh, a letter um, from Birmingham Jail where he wrote, one day the South will know that when these disinherited children of God sat down at lunch counters, they were in reality standing up for what is best in the American dream and for the most sacred values in our Judeo-Christian heritage mm. and thusly carrying our nation back to those great wells of democracy which were dug deep by the founding fathers in their formulation of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. He hit all the notes. You couldn't find that at an NRA convention. Nope. Every, you got the Declaration of Independence, yeah. Constitution, Founding Fathers, uh, basically evil white guys. I, but he, he seemed like he was a fan. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Because he was a fan of the ideas regardless of who espoused them. That's an important part of his worldview. Let's contrast that with today's progressive leftists. They see themselves as fighting against the ideas of the Founding Fathers. I've got a simple idea. Let's give up on the Constitution. I know... It sounds radical, but it's really not. I just expect that guy to go, oh! <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's mid-transition. Ah, he's like his nails to grow, <laughs> and then to make a crappy redux with Benicio Del Toro and Anthony Hopkins. Uh, didn't work. Didn't, didn't work. work. Yikes. <laughs> no. It was, you know, werewolves were ruined by that fruitcake in Twilight. They're no longer scary. Uh, um, yeah. Let's go to Martin Luther King Jr., and the LGBTQAAIP agenda. Here's something that's important. It's not only was he not on board with it, okay? He actively rallied and spoke against it. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that I agree with everything MLK Jr. spoke to, okay? But I want you to be clear on what it is that he believed. Writing an advice, uh, uh, an advice column in Ebony Magazine. Is that still a magazine, Ebony? I think, I think it is. So. Yeah. Really? Yes. Yeah, I believe sure. it is. I just thought it was stuff. Yeah. What? That's an actual magazine, not stuff. This is, this is how out of touch people here are with black culture. Sure. Stuff, yeah, sorry, I, I believe, is an African is a person of color magazine. 
I'll look I could up. just be I don't, confused I don't because know. on the really? cover is always big butts. <laughs> It's likely Stuff yes. magazine. Yeah, Let's fun. bring this up. You are as an not overlay. on any of the covers. I am not, but I, I, I cut it a wide swath. Okay. <laughs> Ebony Magazine, he was uh, asked the following. This was a question from a young man. My problem is different from the ones most people have. I am a boy, but I feel about boys the way I ought to feel about girls. I don't want my parents to know about me. What can I do? Is there any place where I can go for help? And you know what? Listen, you go back contextually, that's kind of a sad letter to read. Yeah. Someone who feels like they can't actually be comfortable in their own skin. Uh, here's the response from Dr. Reverend Pastor Martin yep. Luther King Jr. I don't think he wore the collar. Uh, your problem is not at all an uncommon one. However, it does require careful attention. The type of feeling that you have towards boys is probably not an innate tendency, but something that has been culturally acquired. Your reasons for adopting this habit, ooh, habit, oh, like habit. it's smoking cigarettes, have now been consciously suppressed or unconsciously repressed. Therefore, it is necessary to deal with this problem by getting back to some of the experiences and circumstances that lead to this habit. In order to do this, I would suggest that you see a good psychiatrist. Oh. Holy sh**. Wow. Cancel. Who can assist you in bringing to the forefront of conscience all of those experiences and circumstances that led to the habit. You are already on the right road toward a solution since you honestly recognize the problem and have a desire to solve it. He was one step away from Mike Pence dipping people into shock therapy like Shutter Island. <laughs> so contrary, by the way, to this, th this comparison made between um, civil rights which existed historically, and the modern LGBTQAAIP movement, yeah. Reverend Dr. King, he believed that there was a difference between discrimination based on one's inherent skin color and the plight of those who prefer different sexual friction. A black man being, this is what I, this is how I would put, a black man being hosed down at a diner used as a German Shepherd's Schutzen training toy may not be comparable to this guy's plight not being allowed to take a dump in the little girl's room. <laughs> I think no. it's important to notice no, that there's no. a little bit of a difference. On uh, the one hand, right, we have leftists they, today, they see gender, sexuality, race, everything else as being inextricably linked right through this idea of intersectionality. Intersectionality refers to the reality that we all have multiple Apple identities that intersect <laughs> to make us who we are. It also gives us a way to talk about oppressions and privileges that overlap and reinforce each other. This term dates back to the 1980s and legal scholar Kimberly Crenshaw. Okay, um, this is why leftists believe that you can't be against racism without pushing every other agenda up uh, and including the radical transit. It's, it's all part of one package with them, one tiny inverted duct tape package. <laughs> I want to make sure that just we understand because this is the jumping off point and people invoke the name of Martin Luther King Jr. and they make films about him, but they gloss over the truth as to what he stood for. Yeah. And I know some of you may say it was that point in time, right? If you were alive today, he would have a different viewpoint. Maybe, but here's the thing. Back then there were still people who were Democrats, but progressive leftists who were still pushing these kinds of ideas, right? You can go back to boomers. You can see what people believed in the hippie, the flower power era. You can see what people believed as far as wealth distribution and radical socialism. You can see what they believed in inherent patriarchal Christian society and how they wanted to destroy that foundation. He saw that and spoke out against it. He wasn't a Republican, contrary to popular belief. I'm not gonna perpetuate that myth, but he wasn't really a Democrat either. He was a man of principle as he saw it, and you try to gloss over the ones that you don't like. By the way, hit the notification bell and hit all notifications if you're subscribed on YouTube because apparently, what is it? If you they gotta, don't hit all notifications. You gotta hit all. You gotta subscribe. You gotta talk, touch the bell. The bell will open. You say tuck. All. You say tuck. Well, the duck can throw me off. <laughs> if you were to do the tuck, and I stuff. prefer the helicopter, tuck. <laughs> <laughs> It's a party trick. My wife loves it. Uh, and of course, join Mug Club, letterscutter.com yes. slash Mug Club. Uh, that's what allows us to continue. This is something else that's really important. Uh, obviously, I think many of you know this, but you may not understand the context. Martin Luther King Jr. and his views on how you affect change in society, uh, society notably um, his support for peaceful protest. Let me say, as I've always said, and I will always continue to say, that riots are socially destructive and self-defeating. I'm still convinced that non-violence is the most potent weapon available to oppressed people in their struggle for freedom and justice. 
I feel that violence will only create more social problems than they will solve. I understand when people say he was a good speaker. Like I'm watching that, I'm going, I wish I were black. <laughs> now you know how I'm I kind feel. of ashamed <laughs> that I'm not. I feel like there's a party that I've been left out in. There's like a house party, and there's a guy. I look through the window. There's a well, guy in there with a the tall, uh, flat top. I'm like, oh man, what's he up he to? Looks what's fun. going on in there? That sequel is going to be disappointing. Um, <laughs> and I think this is important because a lot right. of people assume that all figureheads uh, of of most social movements. Believe this, not if you contrast it to people like Malcolm X or even people who are still oh, right. around like Farrakhan. Not all black liberation theologists believed in, uh, in peaceful protests. That's important was he was going against the grain right. compared to a lot of people. You can look at the Black Panthers. You can look at some of the other leaders. That's important to recognize. And I think it's important not to gloss over because it is one of the facets that makes Martin Luther King Jr. unique and why he's beloved by white and black people alike. He believed in a nonviolent legislative process. Yeah. Now, let's contrast that with, again, today's progressives. Violence has become not only common at leftist protests over the last decade. Uh, of course, it, we did a video on that. Is a Black Lives Matter video still up on YouTube or do we have to take it down? It may be down. I'd have to check. I'm not entirely sure. A lot of them are down, but if it's, a, if it's down, you can go to Mug Club. Started with, a, you know, you go back to Black Lives Matter and you fast forward. You have Antifa, you have Occupy Wall Street. Anytime leftists have gathered in the last two decades, let's go three decades. You can even go to Woodstock or Woodstock 99. With a loud, <laughs> yeah, either one. Anyone Ugh, that has the words terrible. wood and stock in it, all the way up to Antifa today, violence isn't an exception. It tends to be the rule. <laughs> Don't you love that girl who loves the protection of knowing that a man won't hit her? Right here. Jeez. Oh gosh, it gets my blood boiling even watching this. I, I, just, I hate that so much. Uh, how long is this clip? At least 10 more seconds of this. Uh, He's Asian. Why didn't he float up a tree branch and flutter kick? <laughs> yeah. What happened? I that well, was part of it. he was working on it. Jackie Chan's full of crap, man. <laughs> so let's do a little thought experiment because this is what really bothers me. You have some people who say, well, you know, the right's been uh, hijacked by the far right. And, uh, you know, mo the left is uh, pretty mo Most people are in the middle. And you have some radical leftists. You hear this a lot. Like people talk about the social justice left and mm. the anti free speech. But that's not a big percentage. You're straw manning. Okay. Martin Luther King Jr., all right? Let's put them side by, he's column A, column B is every single one of the uh, currently left, I think, 1900 candidates yep. for the DNC on a national platform. Where do you think they would agree? All right, um, LGBTQ AIP agenda. Nope, okay. Uh, the importance of family being the central building block of Western society. Nope, okay. The Constitution, the Founding Fathers, the First Amendment, the Second Amendment. Nope. Um, okay. How about the idea of equal rights and viewing people on the, con you know, seeing them through the content of their character rather than the color of their skin? Nope. That goes against intersectionality. That goes against identity. Name me one issue where Martin Luther King Jr. and Debbie Wasserman Schultz or Elizabeth Warren or Bernie Sanders or uh, Cory Booker's not in it. Who's in nope, anymore? He's out. Take he's your out. pick. Mm. One where they would line up. One where Martin Luther King Jr. would say, that's my pick, let alone the roster at MSNBC or CNN or Think Progress. You tell, what, is it they might support a slightly higher tax? Is that it? By the way, slightly higher tax meant a little bit of a different thing, even if Martin Luther King Jr. supported it, compared with Bernie Sanders, 90% would be a good thing. So again, you can't even get into <laughs> economics and say they would line up. Um, something else that I think is pretty important again, because this is why we praise Martin Luther King Jr., but it's not what today's left wants, where he stood and how he espoused and, and really communicated effectively. This is why he was so inspiring. The idea of, of focusing and, and aiming to achieve unity versus division. I have a dream. My poor little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream. 
that, that almost sounds like he's really taking his responsibilities seriously as a dad. Yeah. Hmm. So what did King, what did King <laughs> Jr. I should say King Jr. Thing King was it the guy who nailed? No, no, we're still on Martin Luther King yeah, Jr. Yeah, Stay yeah. with me, okay? Jr. Um, more, more recent. He wanted Americans to be united. Okay, fine. He wanted to be united under what? Under race? Under economic justice? No, he wanted us to be united by ideas and values as opposed to being divided by race. And back then, yeah, there were some white people, terrible white people, who still wanted to divide people by race. That switched a little bit today sometimes. But what ideas uh, under which did he, did he want to see us unified? Those espoused by the Constitution and Declaration of Independence, the, according to him, exact words, Judeo-Christian ideas that founded Western society. He believed most most important, above all, was not race, was not sex or gender when sex is no longer a thing, but we need to share the values. And if you think you need to fill in the blanks, he filled in the blanks very clearly as to what those values were. Again, compare it with any modern DNC candidate or leftist journalist. Send me your comments. What do leftists want? They want people to be, and I'm speaking in some generalities, of course, because I have to save time. But again, I think it's pretty fair if we use the entire DNC <laughs> roster. It's a fair generalization yeah. when they all think pretty much the same, except one believes in a slightly higher tax bracket and the other believes in an astronomically higher yeah. tax rate. Yeah. Um, the left wants to have people viewed exclusively through the prism of race, sex, when that doesn't work, gender, make one up, make up 54 if you want, yeah. white privilege, male privilege. They want to identify people which is funny to me because we're not allowed to, according to the leftist rules, make jokes about intrinsic characteristics, right? right? They don't want us Get to banned. make jokes about right. race, jokes about sex, jokes about gender, jokes about cultural differences, but they want you to recognize people exclusively. They want you to put them in your filing cabinet, in your manila folder, and categorize them exclusively by race, gender, sex. Here you go. You know what? I White oh, privilege. Oh. You've become familiar with the phrase. You hear it on the show a lot. It's somewhat of a cultural flashpoint, certainly during the Trump era. Oh, debates this guy. about race, <laughs> class, politics, oh, culture. They're all intensifying. So it is in that environment that comedian Chelsea Handler comes to the show tonight. What surprised you most? Um, the inability for white people to admit to admit to white privilege, because what I think I've discovered, I think I read a line somewhere that says that said equality to those who've had it feels like a loss. So like if you admit that you are a beneficiary of white privilege, that means to a lot of people, I, I have to start sacrificing things and I have to give something up. Okay, a couple of things. Uh, unless you think I exaggerate, they actually, the left is, they've actually made up worksheets to calculate your exact amount of privilege. That's how serious they are about it. But she just said, you know, it feels like a loss. And so people, you, you might have to give up something. I understand that. At some point, I understand it in 1964, right, where there wasn't equality. If you're looking before the Civil Rights Act, the Voting Act, I understand that perhaps to some racists who met on the weekend with hoods, horrible people, understood, right? Let's mm. make sure that we condemn them Very bad. roundly. I understand they maybe thought it was a loss, but in, I don't want to say 2020 or 2019 because I'd kind of be cutting my argument short here a little bit. The last uh, four decades where we've had equal <laughs> rights, um, what do we need to give up? This is something I don't understand. When Chelsea Handler says it means you might have to give up something. Okay, so let's just go with 2020 to simplify it for you, Chelsea, because I understand you read a line somewhere once, as yeah. you said, on Chris Cuomo. Very uh, technical. <laughs> on Chris Cuomo's yeah. show, Factual. I should say. What, what do I need to give up? What do white people as a group need to give up? And how would that improve black lives? What do we, do we need to give up uh, even lower expectations on SAT scores? Even more uh, quotas in job placement and at colleges? What, what could white people or males, if we're talking, or straight people, cis right. people, what could they give up in 2020 that would help the supposedly oppressed minorities? The point is, there's not, when everything is equal, which is what we have now, there's no longer anything to give up. You're just trying to now create an inequality to right the wrongs of the past. And that was a worldview that Martin Luther King Jr., if you read his writings, beyond a line somewhere at some point, Chelsea, that you would see he clearly advocated against. Does it sound reductive? 
good, that's because it is. Because these are the people who stand on the grave of Martin Luther King Jr. once a year, every year, and try to use his words uh, for political expediency. And it's just not accurate. And it's one of those things, it just shows you how much the media has been carrying the water of the left. Because all that would be required to debunk it is for people to listen to the whole speech, to read writing from MLK Jr., any writing, read any of his advice columns, read any of his dissertations. Some of them are plagiarized. I know we're not talking about the man, but the point is the values, any of it, and you would go, oh, of course, these people have no idea what he was about. A lot of people do ask if, and we do have to wrap up, if MLK Jr., uh, if he were alive today, would he be a Democrat? I, you know, I, let me know what you think. I think that if he had been anywhere close to what we have today, his speech might have been a little different. I have a dream that a man will not be judged by the color of his skin, but exclusively by the color of his skin. I have a dream today that any man, woman, Z, or your guess is as good as mine, will be seen only as the sum parts of the sexual organs skin color and or results of their current hormone replacement therapy. I have a dream. I have a dream that a man will not be admitted to college based on the quality of his test scores or performance, but by a purely race-based bell curve, and that one day not a single Chinaman's face will darken the hallways of Harvard. I have a dream today. Hey, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe. If you're already subscribed, hit the notification bell, hit all notifications. We have new videos that go up every day, uh, as well as, of course, an entire show not available on YouTube at ladderwithcrowder.com slash mug club. If you did not like this show, please comment below uh, and address your comments to Gerald. Be sure to do that. Also, his Twitter. <laughs>